We're on day two of the S&P 500 with a positively sloping 200 daily moving average and price is still holding above critical support levels. So first up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today's buy was down 0.38%. And again, we saw price getting very close to that positively sloping 200 daily moving average and price is still holding above that critical support. So if we just do a quick recap of the year 2022 from the all time high down to the closing lows, we were in a bear market of over a 20% decline from the all time high. And now we're coming out of that low, bouncing off of the 200 weekly simple moving average, and currently price is holding above a positively sloping 200 daily moving average. So I know there's still a lot of people that think there is no way a bull market is possible, and I will define the bull market as the possibility to break out to another higher high because a bull trend is defined by higher lows and higher highs. So just out of curiosity, comment down below if you do think it's possible for a bull market. A simple yes or no will suffice, but if you want to give your reason, go ahead and do that as well. But I just think there's a lot of people who think there is a 0% chance that SPY goes into the 420s and 430s, even though we're getting the price action that confirms it's doable. Now, obviously, there's always the scenario we slice right through there and go back down to 380, but either way, you're going to let the price action tell you which scenario is going to play out by using that risk level at 393. We either bounce off that level or we don't, and we know exactly where we're going if we slice through it. We'll very likely revisit the low at 380, and if we bounce from here, we're looking for that break back over 400 to confirm we're going to close the gap at 408. So every single move from here has a very tradable amount because we're going to easily move $8 to $10 once we get the bounce or the breakdown through this critical level. So just have a trade plan that's ready for both scenarios and then let the price action guide you from there. The other thing I want to point your attention to is the fact that we are seeing an increase in volume. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see that volume has been increasing since mid-February as we're getting this decline. And remember, there is always two sides of a trade. The people that are selling and running for the door thinking a crash is coming are selling to the people who are accumulating, getting ready for the next bull run. So obviously, there will always be a difference of opinions in a market. And that is why the market works, because you always want to have somebody on each side of the trade. And there's always going to be people that think the market can go higher and people that think the market's going lower. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were down 0.8% today. And the triple Qs also got a positive bounce off of the rising 200 daily moving average which is right there at 290 just like spy that's the critical risk level because if we break down below it we could go fill the gap at 288 and then the gap at 273 and if we bounce from it we're likely going back up to fill the gap at 303 and get a bull breakout that could take us to fill the gap at 322 so no matter which scenario you think is going to play out you should be letting the price action guide you and not trying to guess because as i always try to teach you you should follow the price action in the trend if we bounce from here the trend is still bullish and if we break down through here we're very likely continuing into the bear trend and do keep in mind the triple Qs have this giant double bottom off of 260 anytime they're above the neckline breakout at 294. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.13% today and the Dow Jones is getting the second day in a row closing below that support breakdown at 327 and the 200 daily moving average is just a little bit lower just below 324. As long as the Dow Jones can hold above 324, it is possible to get a positive bounce back into the 340s, but we will have resistance at 327 and right around 333. If we break down below the 200 daily moving average, we'll very likely come down here to fill the gap at 311. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 0.13% and we did break back over that resistance, which is now support at 188. If we lose this support, we could break down below the next support at 185 and fill the gap at 181, which we also do have the rising 200 daily moving average at that gap fill. Now, if we hold support and start to bounce, we need to break the resistance up here just below 192, and that should be the all clear that we're going back up for another leg higher in the low 200s. On the ARK ETF, we were down 2.32% today and we did break back down below 39, but still finding support at this rising 50 EMA just above 38. This is a lower high, lower low breakdown while we're below 39, so it is risk off below 39, but we are still above some type of critical support, which you do need to keep that in mind. We need to break down below 38.4 to start trending down towards 37 and then 35, and the bull breakout will be the break above 40.8 to about 41, and that should send us back up into the range around 44 to 45. On the VIX, we were down 0.58% today, and the VIX continues to get crushed every time it tries to break out in the low 20s. Now, do keep in mind the VIX above 20 is still a volatile market, which does favor more selling, 
But if we do get the VIX crushing back down below 20 and do get a positive bounce off of those rising 200 daily moving averages, it will look like the start of another bull trend. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 1.4% and Bitcoin is hanging on to this support trend line and the rising 20 daily moving average and that support is right around 23,400. If we lose that, we're likely coming down to 22,400 and then 21,300. And if we lose all of that support, we're coming back down to the 200 daily moving average right around 20,000. The next bull breakout will be above 25,000 for the price target at 30,000. On Amazon stock, we were down 2.19% and Amazon is continuing to lose this support just below 94, which very likely means it's trying to fill the gap down here at 90. If we fill the gap at 90 and continue lower, this is going to look like a very obvious downtrend, which could take us back down to retest the lows right around 82. But if we bounce off the gap fill and get a positive bounce back over 98, we could be starting back into another leg higher, which will give us confirmation on the break above 102 that we're going to 109 and then 115. On Microsoft stock, we were down 1.26% as Microsoft is continuing to reject below the breakdown of 252, which is giving an increased probability it's trying to get to 242. Below 242 will be the next bearish breakdown, but do consider that strong support. And the resistance to break for the bulls will be 252 and then above that we'll be looking for the gap fill just below 262. on nvidia stock we were down 2.23 percent today so the short from nvidia at 238 continues to work but we are now sitting on top of a potential support at 227. we have the rising 20 daily moving average and the support trend line right here right around 220 so watch that downside support if we break below 227 and then below that we'll likely come down towards this gap fill at 211. The bulls need to break the resistance at 238 to get a short squeeze that could take us higher into the 240s. On Tesla stock, we were down 1.43% today and Tesla is right on top of extremely critical support, which is this rising 20 daily moving average and the support trend line just below 200. Below that, we have strong support at 196, but if we lose those two support levels, we could easily revisit critical support at 183. Now also keep in mind, this is a bull flag, so there is the possibility we just chop between about 196 and about 20 before we get a breakdown or a breakout. There's still a good chance we're going higher towards 230 as long as we're trading above 196. On Apple stock, we were down 1.42% today and Apple did break down below that support at 146 and we did reach the next support lower, which is this rising 50 EMA at 145. Just look at the Bollinger Bands and you can see they are very tight and very squeezed, which is going to limit the downside potential in Apple stock. But if we do break down below 145, the next price target lower will be 141. The bulls need to get back over 147 and then back over 150 and then we'll be looking for the higher price target at 156. On the financials we were down 0.34% today and the financials are breaking down below the 50 EMA so this could be a bearish breakdown if we make another lower low and lose the support at 35. The industrials were up 0.4% today closing back over the 50 EMA but still below the 20 daily moving average and this is really just sideways consolidation without any clear direction. On the healthcare sector, we were down 0.17% today on very high volume, and this is extremely oversold, so I am thinking we're going to see a bounce in the very near future, but this is still a bear trend while we're trading below 130. On the energy sector, we were up 1.97%, and we are getting a bounce off of that rising 200 daily moving average, which is that support zone right around 82.6. Overall, this is still a downtrend, and we do have a gap to fill to the upside at 87.5, so we may need to go a little bit higher before we go any lower. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you know the very critical support, which is a risk level for shorting below or going long above, and from here, we're going to find out where the next leg in the market is. We're not going to make any guesses is we're simply going to follow the price action and we know exactly what support levels and what resistance levels we need to pay attention to and then from there we're going to let the price action do all the talking if you want to come trade with the stocks channel community consider joining the discord server where you'll get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis and you can trade with other price action traders i also have a trade alert service called bank trade alerts that sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message and only trades the ets t triple q and s triple q you can find out how to join the stocks channel discord or bank trade alerts by clicking on the link in the description of this video so thank you for watching everybody i hope you're crushing this market and as always i will see you in the next episode